Hi, my name is Megan Hogan, and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Washington in Dr. Rebecca Hull's lab at the VA Puget Sound Healthcare System. I'm going to give a brief synopsis on a recent article published in Endocrinology, Markers of Islet Endothelial Dysfunction Occur in Male DBDB Mice and May Contribute to Reduced Insulin Release. The whole lab is interested in the role of islet endothelial cells in islet function. The islet itself is a highly vascularized structure, and it's well established that the beta cells and endothelial cells participate in a bit of crosstalk, releasing factors that help maintain the phenotype and function of each of their partner cells. As endothelial dysfunction underlies many types of diabetic microvascular conditions and complications, we wonder whether in diabetes, if the islet endothelial cell might become dysfunctional and co contribute to beta cell secretory function. To explore this problem, we undertook a variety of in vivo and in vitro studies, beginning with the use of the DBDB diabetic mouse model. We observed that beginning at eight weeks of age, we saw changes in the microvasculature of the islets, thickening and fragmentation, similar to what is observed in type two diabetics in humans, even before we observed changes in beta cell area at 16 weeks of age. When we isolated islets from these animals, we were able to see increases in markers of endothelial dysfunction at eight weeks of age and further, increased, um, mark, uh, further increases of these markers at 16 weeks, which is what is shown here. We see increases in markers of cell adhesion, inflammation, and vasoconstriction as well as decreases in the protein levels of NOS3, a vasodilator. Additionally, by 16 weeks of age, we see significant increases in advanced glycation end products, co-localizing with the vasculature of these islets, which you can see in the yellow and green and red portions of this photo. To further explore the direct role of endothelial dysfunction in islet function, we used an immortalized and islet endothelial cell line, the MS1 cells. We grew these cells for six days under low glucose or control conditions, and also under what we considered type two diabetic conditions, which contained high glucose with free fatty acids, insulin, and TNF alpha. The cells were then washed on the sixth day and clean glucose matched media was added to the cells for 24 hours. These cells were then harvested and this conditioned media was collected and saved. When we looked at these cells, we found that the MS1 cells under diabetic conditions showed increases in E-selectin and endothelin-1 markers, with a non-significant trend for decreased levels of NOS3 protein. The conditioned media from these cells was then matched for glucose levels and isolated whole islets from wild-type mice were cultured for two days in each of these conditioned medias, at which point we performed measurements for basal and glucose-stimulated insulin secretion. We observed a significant decrease in stimulates, stimulated secretion from islets exposed to the conditioned media from the diabetic MS1 cells. There was also a decrease in the insulin content of these islets, but the fractional release shows that the major effect on these islets was based on their decreased secretory capacity. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time and also to acknowledge our institution and funding sources.